Hey, how's it going? My name is Josh, founder of the Vigorbill Training System where I help people drop up to 30 pounds of stern belly fat in 90 days while building strength and muscle. And today, I wanna go over how to properly use a scale to measure your progress, all right? So the biggest mistake I see people do when using the scale is that they judge their progress based off of how much they weigh on a day-to-day -day basis or week-to-week -week basis, okay? So there's one of two ways you should be using the scale. You should be either weighing yourself once a day, okay, and gather that data and compare the average from the first week to the second week, all right? Or measure, weigh yourself once per month, okay? And also understand that using the scale, there's, uh, there's other ways to measure progress like progress pictures, waist and hip circumference, but today I just wanna talk about how to properly use the scale because there's a lot of misconceptions and people really get discouraged based off of the number on the scale, okay? So the reason why you either wanna weigh yourself once a day and gather the information or once per month is because your body weight can fluctuate anywhere from one to five pounds on a day-to-day -day and week-to-week -week basis. And there are many different reasons as to why this happens and I have them listed here and I'll go through each of them. But um, the first one, it may be salt intake. So a lot of times people over consume in salt, so naturally your body will retain water, okay? Also water intake, a lot of times your body will hold on to water because you're not drinking enough water. So that's why it's very important to have roughly about a gallon per day or making sure that when you drink water that your urine comes out like lemonade colored. You don't want it to be too clear. And you don't want it to be like bright yellow, right? Also weight training, okay? So when you're lifting weights, okay? And you had a good training session, naturally you have micro tears in your muscles, right? And naturally your body will flush water into those muscles to provide nutrients for you to recover from your workouts. So if you had a really intense workout, a lot of times you can wake up heavier the next day because your body's, your muscles are holding on, it's holding on to water to provide nutrients to the area, right? Also late night eating, naturally, if you eat late at night before going to bed, your body naturally hasn't digested the food that you just ate, so you're po you can possibly wake up a few pounds heavier if you eat too late at night, okay? Also, stress, okay? This one's very important because if you're not managing stress, you're not getting in proper sleep every night, your body can release a lot of cortisol in the body which can help, which can st stop the fat burning process and um, make you retain water, okay? So, um, very important to manage stress. So these are all the different factors that can cause you to hold on to water, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you're building fat, okay? As long as you're consistent with your training and your nutrition, you should see the overall trend to go down. So. How should you properly use a scale? I'm gonna give you a quick example of how the scale can go wrong, okay? And how can how it can trick you from uh, making you think that you're not making progress, okay? So let's say this person just started their diet. They started weighing 170 pounds, okay? And this is their first week of training, okay? And throughout the week, the scale is going down, right? And then if we get the average of the seven days, he weighs 169. But let's say on Saturday or Sunday, he um, ate something that had a little bit too much salt. He comes back on Monday to weigh himself, okay? And he weighs exactly the same as when he started the first week, okay? But if we get the average of the seven days, he was weighing 169. So. If he comes back here, he may think that he didn't make any progress that week. And it could trick him to think that he's not um, losing fat and he's not making progress. But um, let's say he doesn't get discouraged. He, he tries to go at it again the second week, okay? 
let's say he goes back to his diet, right? And throughout the seven days, the average is 168. So here he's lost weight and he's made progress, but it may seem that he's weighing the same, okay? So that is the key to get the average of the seven days, okay? And if that's too much for you, then compare how much you weigh from month to month, okay? And here I have a graph on the X, we have time, on the Y we have body weight, okay? This is very typical on how your body weight can fluctuate throughout your fat loss journey, okay? So you may see dips, but then again, you didn't drink enough water, so the scale will jump up, okay? And a lot of times your body weight can stall for, I've seen up to three weeks before it drops again, assuming that you're staying consistent with your nutrition and your training, okay? So this is very typical. This is how weight loss is gonna look. It's gonna go up, it's gonna go down, you're gonna stall, but the key is just to stay consistent gather data and make sure that the overall trend of your body weight is going down over time, okay? So really cool apps that you can download in order to see, track your body weight and to see if you're heading towards the right direction is an app called Happy Scale, okay? Happy Scale is a really good app because when you track your body weight every day, it shows you the overall trend. Another really good app is MyFitnessPal, right? Because not only can you track your nutrition and your calories, but you can also um, track your body weight and how the, that, that set amount of calories that you're eating correlates to your progress and, and how much progress you're making, all right? And again, the scale is not the only tool that you should be using to measure progress. You should be using progress pictures. You can use waist and hip circumference. This is just the proper way to use a scale, okay? Either weigh yourself every day, gather that data, compare the average of the seven days, or weigh yourself once a month to see how you compare from a month to month basis, okay? And I hope this was helpful, guys. If you don't know how many calories you should eat, then check out the video down below. I talk about how you can calculate your calories using a TDEE calculator, all right? But hope this was helpful, guys. If you're looking to drop up to 30 pounds of stubborn belly fat in 90 days, then message me down below and comment 30 pounds and I'll give you more information on the Vigorbuild training system where I'll create a done-for-you meal plan and I'll create a custom workout program either at home or in the gym to make sure that you're burning fat, building muscle, and you'll also have full access to me so I can answer all your questions to make sure that you break through any roadblocks that you may experience throughout your 90-day transformation, all right? Hope this helps, guys. Catch you guys later. Peace.